then sometime later, you know, any one of these other processes could do a load of X into some register. They look up their cache, don't find the data in their cache, or find the data in invalid state, and that triggers a cache miss. So they place a request on the bus saying, I'm trying to read X. All the other caches look up to see if they have a copy of X. P1 realizes that yes, it does have a copy of X, and it's in modified state. That means this is the only valid copy of data, right? Even main memory does not have the latest copy of data because all of these changes have been made locally in this cache, right? So that cache copy of X is the only valid copy of data. So in this case, P1 has to provide the value of X that was requested by P3, right? And so it takes the value of X from cache and puts it on the bus. And when that happens, the value of X is picked up from the bus, placed in processor P3, and since P3 is just trying to do a read, it gets placed in shared state. And similarly, this state of block X and P1 moves from modified to shared because you are now downgrading your permissions, right? Because there are going to be other cache copies of X, you can't go ahead and modify the block anymore. You can only read from that block. So you downgrade your status from modified to shared. And when this happens, even main memory picks up the value of X that was on the bus and updates its own copy. This is because when somebody else makes a request for X now, memory is responsible for providing the data, right? So this is the time when even main memory updates its copy, right? So anytime a block goes from modified to shared, a write back into the main memory also happens. Okay, let's continue with this example again. Let's say that P2 makes a request for X again, and this is a read request, has a cache miss, places a read X request on the bus, all of these other caches snoop, but because the block is in shared state in P3 and P1, they don't bother responding and memory responds with the data. So X gets placed over here also in shared state. Okay, then P4, let's say, decides to do a store into X, has a cache miss, places a request over here saying, I don't have the block X at all. So this is a write X request that gets placed on the bus. And all of these other caches say, well, somebody's doing a write. This is now when I'm going to downgrade my permissions. So all of these caches go from shared to invalid state. And main memory decides to provide the latest copy of X, places it on the bus. This gets picked up over here, gets placed in the cache, and it's now in modified state because I'm trying to do a write. So now that it's in modified state, I know this is the only cache copy of the block. I have full read and write permissions and I can go ahead. Now let's say that P3 decides to do a write into X as well. It looks up the cache, it's an invalid state, so places a request on the bus saying, I'm trying to write into X. All the other caches do a lookup. P4 realizes that it has a block of X in modified state. That means this is the only valid copy of data, so it is forced to respond to this request. So it places the value of X on the bus, gets picked up, gets placed in this cache, and the block is now placed in modified state, which allows P3 to do both reads and writes to this block. And this block downgrades itself from modified to invalid because someone else is doing a write, right? So you, everybody else has to move into the invalid state. Now you could also argue that since the block is going to get overwritten anyway in P3, why did I bother sending the latest copy of X from P4 to P3? The reason is that you're always dealing with these blocks at the granularity of a 64-byte entity, right? And what P3 is trying to do is maybe modify only four bytes in that block, okay? But you still need the rest of the block in there so that subsequent reads and writes can be serviced with cache hits, okay? So the block is going to move from modified state in P4 to modified state in P3. So I've gone through a bunch of examples and I've explained on this slide exactly what happens in each one of these cases. This slide over here also goes through this in, in great detail, right? So when P1 makes a request for read X, it looks up the cache. Initially, it's going to be a cache miss. So it places a read X request on the bus. In other cases, you'll see a write X request or an upgrade request being placed on the bus. Accordingly, someone responds. In many cases, it's the memory that responds. In a few cases, if in this case, you know, P2 has the block in modified state, and so it responds with the data. What I'm showing you over here is the state of that block in each one of the four caches. Okay, so in this initial example, it gets placed in cache one in the shared state. Then when P2 does a read of X, 
X now is in shared state in two different caches. When P2 does a write of X, it upgrades, moves itself into modified state, and the first cache invalidates its own cache copy. Right? And similarly, you go through these other states. You'll see that there's only one case where you do a memory write back. This is where a block is in modified state and then moves from modified to shared. And that's when I said that you perform a memory write back. So this is essentially described a snooping based cache coherence protocol. You can also define other kinds of cache coherence protocols, right? So you can define what is referred to as a directory based protocol. What we had seen over here is also referred to as a write invalidate protocol. That means when someone is performing a write, everybody else invalidates their cache copy. One other option is when someone performs a write, it pushes that new value into all the other caches. So it updates all of the other cached values. And that's referred to as a write update protocol. Most modern protocols happen to be write and validate because write and validate requires a lot less traffic on the bus than a write update protocol. So in the next slide, I'm going to go through an example of a directory based protocol.